Welcome to ACID, the Neurodiagnostic Society. ACID is the national professional organization that represents neurodiagnostic technologists. We want to take just a few minutes to provide you with an overview of neurodiagnostic technology and its importance to patient care. Neurodiagnostic technology is a specialized field of healthcare in which a person's nervous system function is analyzed and monitored to help their doctor provide effective treatment of neurological conditions and diseases. You can use neurodiagnostic testing to establish problems in the central nervous system, that is the brain or the spinal cord, and you can also use it for diagnosing problems in the peripheral nervous system, so that is the nerves and the muscles themselves. This allows us to better determine the cause of the, of the problem and then also then uh, give the patient the appropriate treatment options for their condition. Neurodiagnostic tests are easy to undergo. They're non-invasive and straightforward. Let's do a quick rundown of some of the most common neurodiagnostic tests. The most widely known neurodiagnostic test is the electroencephalogram, or EEG as it's commonly known. It is a recording of the electrical activity in your brain. To prepare a patient for an EEG test, the neurodiagnostic technologist will place electrodes at measured locations on the patient's head. The EEG may be done on both adults and children, and the whole process takes about 90 minutes on average. Oftentimes, it's very helpful to record sleep so the patient may be asked to stay awake extra hours the night before the test. The EEG is used to help diagnose epilepsy or to evaluate the effects of head trauma or severe infectious disease. An EEG can also help to determine the cause of symptoms such as headaches, dizziness, seizures or convulsions, loss of consciousness, strokes, and other symptoms you may be experiencing. Once we're through um, obtaining the um, test, then our epileptologist would read the test, and at that time, the epileptologist would um, let them know what the results are of that test. Long-term EEG monitoring requires admission into a hospital and involves a simultaneous recording of an EEG and video recorded behavior for an extended period of time, from several hours to multiple days. One of the goals of that test is to capture a seizure while they're in the hospital, while they have the EEG on, and while there's a video camera in the room. And that way I can get the most information. I can see physically what happens to the person via the video, and then I can see what the brain waves show when they have a seizure. This is valuable for doctors to diagnose patients who are having infrequent neurological disturbances or to diagnose or characterize events for epilepsy and seizures, or to evaluate change in medications. Intraoperative neuromonitoring may include EEG or evoke potential recordings performed during surgery. You may not even realize it's happening, but it's very important to monitor neurological structures at risk during your surgical procedure. Intraoperative neuromonitoring helps alert the surgeon to certain kinds of neurological complications and promotes positive neurological outcomes after surgery. So to me, the role of a neurodiagnostic tech is to provide live feedback during surgery on the functional integrity of the nervous system, including the spinal cord, the brain, and the blood supply to it, back to the surgeon so that they are aware of how the patient is handling the procedure. Some of the surgeries that commonly include intraoperative neuromonitoring are spinal surgery for scoliosis, tumors and aneurysms, vascular surgery, and some ENT surgeries. Now let's talk about evoked potentials. These are recordings of the electrical activity from the brain, spinal nerves, or sensory receptors in response to external stimulation. Don't worry, this external stimulation is painless and could be a mere auditory click or visual pattern change. So evoked potentials are, are similar to sort of intraoperative monitoring in that we do it in the outpatient setting. Uh, again, certain nerves or muscle groups are, are recorded um, and that information is given back to the physician. This test is valuable when evaluating neurological problems such as spinal cord injuries, hearing loss, blurred vision or blind spots, acoustic neuroma, and optic neuritis. Nerve conduction studies evaluate peripheral nerve function. 
These studies are performed by placing electrodes in positions on the skin and then delivering an electrical signal to the correct nerve to produce a response. Nerve conduction studies are typically recorded on patients either in the outpatient or the inpatient setting. Uh, we do sensory and motor testing of the, the nerve conduction to find out velocity as well as amplitude. Patients who undergo nerve conduction studies typically suffer from numbness, tingling, muscle pain or weakness, muscle cramping, abnormal movements, and pain or loss of sensation. These studies help your doctor determine the cause of these symptoms and how to best proceed with treatment. The nervous system consists of three parts, motor, sensory, and autonomic. The autonomic nervous system controls such things as blood pressure, blood flow, and sweating. Autonomic tests will determine if the autonomic nervous system is working properly. One of the more common autonomic tests is the head-up tilt table, which helps to determine how blood pressure and heart rate change in response to body position. The test shows, for example, if a patient is disposed to low blood pressure or to fainting during these physiologic events. The last test we'll discuss today is the magnetoencephalography, or MEG. This is a test that records changing magnetic fields associated with electrical activity in the brain. So a MEG is actually complementary to an EEG. Uh, the MEG can actually tell you uh, sulci activity, which is deeper in the brain than an EEG. An EEG can tell you uh, gyrus activity. So the two together can actually give you a, a holistic uh, image of the brain and its activity. MEG is useful to determine the functionality of various parts of the brain and can be helpful in evaluating patients for epilepsy surgery. Now let's talk about what to expect when you arrive for your test. Depending on which neurodiagnostic test you're having, the preparation will be different. You'll first be introduced to a neurodiagnostic technologist who's an important member of your medical team. We assist the patient by making them feel very comfortable with the neurodiagnostic test. We explain the procedure as well as explain what information that would yield to relieve their fear. All the tests are easy to perform and you can remain anxiety free. The neurodiagnostic technologist will verify your identity, prepare you for the test, ask you about your medical history, medications, and important family medical history. Technologists are trained to recognize emergency situations should one arise, so you can rest assured your safety is always their top priority. The neurodiagnostic technologist will maintain your privacy at all times. The technologist will then conduct the test and provide the data to a physician for interpretation. The neurodiagnostic technologist is vital to what I do, what our center does. Uh, basically, we couldn't do our jobs without them. So they are the ones that perform the test with expertise. And um, when you have a great technologist, you end up with great tests that give you more information. So they are really like the first line of defense to give an, an accurate diagnosis. The neurodiagnostic technologist who's in the room, in the operating room with us, is monitoring consistently various neurologic functions such as motor, speech, specific cranial nerves, spinal cord function, all these things. So they're consistently giving us feedback as we are continuing to work. We find that our relationship with them is very, very good, and they tend to uh, be a huge asset to our team. Credentials independently documenting a technologist's expertise may be earned in every aspect of neurodiagnostics. Well, now you know a lot more about neurodiagnostic technology, the people involved, the benefits of the test to you and your doctor. For more information on the profession, visit asset.org.